Hi, I'm Dave Pereira. Welcome to my channel. Today we have the special Christmas edition and I want to talk to you about the sprint planning. But our focus is what you should not do to ensure a great sprint planning. And I will share with you some things that I have done many times and the only thing that resulted was in a horrible experience. Because for me, the sprint planning can have two results. It can be an awesome meeting or a horrible one. Let's focus on getting the awesome part. The horrible, you don't want that. And what can lead the sprint planning to have a horrible experience? The first one is a sprint planning without a goal. It starts like this. You as a product owner, go to the sprint planning and then you look at the developers and you ask, what is our capacity? And the developers will say, hmm, last sprint we delivered 37 star points and this sprint, I think we don't have any holidays, we can commit to 40 story points. And then you as a product owner, you hear these 40 star points and you say, hmm, I know what we should do. We have some things to solve for the logistic team we can consume around 13 points for that, but we also have something for the payment team. They are complaining we don't have PayPal, maybe we implement that. Then we can also fix something for the content because our product detail page looks like shit. We should make it a little bit better. Let's make that. And the only goal we will define with the team is by the end of this sprint, we will have all the features delivered. That's our commitment. Can we do that? And the developers will say, well, that is a little bit challenging for us, but I guess we can commit to that. But take a look at the result now. The developers are going to different directions. Do they have a chance to collaborate? I guess they don't, because someone has to focus on the logistics and the other has to focus on the PayPal. And then someone else will also have to focus on the product detail page. And what is the goal? How can they collaborate? They have no chance. It will be like a football. Imagine a match where everyone has a ball and they can kick whatever they want. That is the game. Do you think it's a real game? It's not. Because if you have a group of people pursuing different things, it's not a team. It's just a group of people. To make it a team, you need to have a goal because this is this binding effect that we will let them collaborate and foster collaboration. How can you avoid that? You as a product owner should come with a sprint goal. You shouldn't craft that perfectly, but should give a direction to the team. And together, the whole Scrum team will craft that better. An example, you work in an online shopping and you say like this, at the end of this sprint, our customers can recommend their friends to come here and buy Christmas gifts. That's it. What could we do to achieve this? And the team will resonate on that and say, wow, maybe we could do this and this and this. But the team has a goal to pursue. They don't have a set of tasks to deliver. They have a goal. And they will select whatever it needs to make that happen. But you see the difference the team will select is not about specific developers going to different directions. And this is the point of the sprint goal because you set what is needed to achieve and you don't lock the team into a prison of a commitment of a lot of features. Building more features doesn't mean anything. It's all about maximizing the impact, the outcome. Remember that features are output and the outcome is the result of the feature. And the sprint goal should enable that to achieve. Another problem I want to talk to you is about the segmented sprint. Some people think that the sprint should be split into 50% features, 20% technical debt, 20% bugs, and 10% spare time. Once again, if you do that, the only thing you are gonna do is to split the teams into different directions. You don't wanna do that. And I would also be more curious to understand why do we have to focus 20% of our time fixing bugs? 
and 20% of our time fixing technical debt. Wouldn't it be better to find a way how to avoid technical debt and bugs instead of just accepting and investing 40% of our time fixing that? So you should invest your time understanding why these problems happen in the first place instead of investing time to fix the problem. Fix the root cause, not the problem. And the sprint should not be segmented. There is a goal to pursue, not a set of tests to deliver. The scrum team should not commit on the feature level. You commit on the goal level. That's called the sprint goal. And you should think, why is this sprint goal important? Why is this sprint goal helping us to achieve the product goal? So that is what you should focus on instead of segmenting the sprint. Now we come to the third problem I want to explore, the unprepared product backlog. If you, as a product owner, come to the sprint planning with a backlog not prepared for the meeting, it's going to be a horrible experience. Why? Because you will need to add a layer to the sprint planning, which is called the product backlog refinement. Because you will need to create a new ticket and also explore with the team what should be done and how and estimate and so on. It will be really stressful for the team. Because there's a special moment for that called the backlog refinement, which is the moment where you bring the problems and refine with the team so that the team understand how to move to the next step, which would be putting inside a sprint. But you don't have that prepared. You need to hack into the sprint planning. I've done that a couple of times and I would not recommend because the team will be very stressed, the morale will go down and probably the meeting will be not effective. Maybe you will not be able to finish. Some refinements take longer and it's fine because it's the moment for the team to understand the problem properly and then explore which are the possible solutions for that. Not the implementation, but the possible path to get to the solution. And the sprint planning has one goal, which is to prepare the team for the next interaction. And you define the sprint goal and the team will take the product backlog items suitable for the goal and break that down into the workable chunks. So that is what it's about. But if you add the backlog refinement, it will be a disaster. So as a good product owner, you will do the refinement properly and you will come to the meeting with a proper backlog. Then you avoid this kind of problem. To summarize what we have discussed here today, don't start a sprint without a goal. Otherwise, it will be like a group of people going to different directions. Just remember the football game where everyone has the ball. It's not a team, just a group of people. And if you have defined the sprint goal correctly, then you don't fall into the second problem, which is segmenting the sprint. Leave the room for the team to decide when to fix the technical debt and so on. The most important is to pursue the goal. And the third problem is unprepared backlog. You as a good product owner, we always come with a prepared product backlog. Because if you don't have that, it's as bad as having a very extensive product backlog, where there are items of 300 years old, and you are afraid of deleting that, though it makes no sense at all. I would be very curious to know what are your experience with horrible sprint planning. Just write down a comment and then we can exchange about it. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe for more. And now we are in the end of the year. I wish you a very good holidays with your family and beloved ones. And I also wish you a great 2021 and I hope the next year will be better for all of us. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for watching.